Good morning, easily offended millennials. I hope you like my new background. I call this, my city is experiencing historic flooding and all of my valuables are on my bed in case my house floods. So I make do with what I can. Cute and Kenny, more than just one out of many. This video is going to include discussions about racism. And because I am white, none of these thoughts about racism in this video are my original thought. I accredit to most of the ideas that I have picked up from these two videos created by two very lovely black YouTubers. So go and check them out, please, because they're lovely and awesome and like, why not? All white people are racist, all men are misogynistic, all cisgender people are transphobic, all members of a majority are biased against the members of the minority or press group. In fact, most people are racist, misogynistic, transphobic, ableist, etc. I am racist, classist, ableist, and I probably contribute to many other systems of marginalization that I am not aware of. Words like racist, misogynistic, and transphobic are not insults, nor are they stereotypes or generalizations. Rather, they are facts about the way we are socialized in a Western society, and in most other societies. I talk mostly about Western societies because that is what I have the most experience with. Saying that we're all raised to believe that gender is defined by anatomy and chromosomes is not a stereotype. It's a fact about how we are raised. Even if you have liberal parents or teachers who teach you about gender identity, you still come into contact with the idea of biological gender through the media or through interactions with other people. Even if you are raised by open-minded people, you will still be psychologically affected by living in a society built on imperialism, which by the way, it created cisnormativity and heteronormativity. A 2012 study, which I will link below, observed how white people empathize with black people less than we do with other white people, because our minds register their pain as being less severe than it actually is. We're raised to believe that black people are lesser, and that they're more likely to be dangerous to us, even though history has proved the opposite to be true. We're raised to believe that gender is based on biology, and that features that are typically associated with one sex are repulsive or shocking on the other binary gender, especially when it comes to transgender women. Beauty standards affect everyone's psychology, and cisnormative beauty standards are no exception. If you followed me this far, and you agree that all people are psychologically affected by marginalization, but you disagree with calling these biases racism, or transphobia, or misogyny, then there's really no point in arguing further. Once the discussion boils down to disagreement over the definition of a word, it's probably not going to be very productive. However, I will make an argument for why I believe we should view racism, transphobia, and misogyny from a wider lens, and you can feel free to respectfully disagree with me. I think that when people hear words like racism, transphobia, and misogyny, they think of blatant, unapologetic hate, like violently attacking someone because of their identity. Certainly people who commit violent hate crimes are very, very bad people. However, I believe to properly dismantle systems of oppression, we must acknowledge that being racist or transphobic or misogynistic or ableist or whatever does not make you a bad person. By being afraid to call ourselves racist, we are failing to acknowledge how our biases contribute to systematic racism. Microaggressions are mocked as not really being a big deal, so we fail to acknowledge when they do legitimate harm. Yes, there have been a lot of police officers who have been outed as members of the KKK, but not every police officer who has harmed an unarmed black or Latinx person has been a member of the KKK. 
Subconscious biases are the reason why we're more likely to see a black person holding a cell phone or toy gun and think we see a dangerous armed person. And they're also to blame for the fact that many victims of police brutality were never given the medical treatments that could have saved their lives. Microaggressions are also to blame for the fact that transgender women are stereotyped as being sex workers, which hurts people like Megan Taylor, who was jailed for 8 days after the hotel she was staying at wrongfully reported her. If we refuse to classify people who hold biases and stereotypes as racists or transphobes, then we're not acknowledging how damaging less blatant racism and transphobia can be and we're not forcing people to become aware of their own microaggressions. The whole point of acknowledging that we're racist, transphobic, misogynistic, etc. is so that we can better recognize our biases and work to overcome them. So those are my thoughts. I don't normally speak on issues that I feel like black people can much more eloquently and originally speak on, but I had a lot of people coming to my channel wanting to know why I said all white people are racist, so this is why. Please go check out some other channels that I have linked in the description and in the information bar thing. I think it's over here. It's over here. That thing right there. Like, click it because wow. Wow. Go, go check out some other people who can say this better than I can. Cool. Thanks. Bye, people.